Hello everyone, Pally Time here, and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. We are starting a new deep dive into Ragnaros. Before I started recording this series, he was my highest win raid character. Oh, okay, thank God. Okay, okay, he still is. Although, I was definitely humbled a few times today. The viewers had it out for me, bro. Some of these games were tough. Well, our goal for the Deep Dive series is to teach you the ins and outs of each of the characters. We have a playlist down in the video description showing off other characters in the roster, but today we are starting Ragnaros's journey. He has three very distinct builds that are all focused around his base abilities. Blast Wave is his E ability, Living Meteor is his W ability, and the build we are playing today is focused around Empower Sulfurus. This is the build I have played the least for Ragnaros, and I was surprised how much of a learning curve it had. But I hope you guys enjoy today's game nonetheless. If you do, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button, and let's get into today's match. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on the two of the Spider Queen today. The friendly team, Ragnaros, Anduin, Tychus, Muradin, and Tronda. Whisper in the road. What the heck? Uh, starts off the enemy team, followed by Taz Dingo, Chromie, Anduin, and Mal Ganus. We've been trying to get the Q build to work in the last few matches, and I've had some growing pains. Uh, hopefully, hopefully today's the day. Hopefully we can make it work. Oh, this is terrifying. So our Q ability is called Empower Sulfurus. It makes our next basic attack instant. So what that means is it's going to be resetting our attack swing. Uh, and then smashes the ground, dealing AOE damage. And with our setup today, it's gonna be healing us for a decent amount of HP as well. I'm gonna leave this fight because I immediately need to go start thinking about my last hits. That's right, you need 25. <laughs> That's right, you need 25 of them with Empower Sulfurus. And it does get easier as the game goes on, to be fair. Uh, will I be able to make it back to my building? Your guess is as good as mine. Go ahead and hit our sippy cup. From the team double soaking top and bottom, exactly what they... No, I think I'm supposed to be bottom. I always get the off lane backwards on this map. I've done it since the beginning of time. Hold on, let me stay here. If we're in the wave, we're probably fine. The second we get out of the wave, the Haka can uh, have his way with me and I don't like that as much. So we've gotten three last hits so far. Uh, easiest way to do it is to hit backline while your minions are hitting frontline. It's two auto attacks and then Q. I fucked it up. Uh, that was just fat finger clicking though. Two auto attacks and then Q is how you last hit stuff at the beginning of the game. The Haka with the grab onto a minion. I don't mind that at all, but we are going to back up as Dingo once again reappears from the fog. So we talked about our Q ability. Our W ability is leaving Meteor. This is the meatball. We throw it on the ground and it rolls in a direction. Our E ability, we can cast this on either ourselves or allies to give them a boost of speed and deal damage around the target. E build is what I normally play. And I was talking about this last game with chat. I feel like it's really, I really miss it. Really miss it. I'm trying to get in range a lot with my cues and it just seems like I'm always just being kited just a little bit too far and I'm missing those E boosts. But we'll try to make it work. Uh, I was letting Dahaka trade pretty well there because I was saving my cues for this last hitting portion. My... My idea being like, if I invest more time and effort into it now, we'll get that payoff much sooner. If you're wondering what that payoff is, after killing after killing minions, increase our Q damage by an additional hundred. And remember, that's an AOE, so that's a lot. It's a big, that's a big increase. Catching fire is our level four quest, and with this, all we need to do is gather region globes. Our quest becomes um, just picking up these globes in hopes of getting armor and some improved health regen. Once our quest is done, we just hit Q, or we hit one, and we go in and take 25% less damage for a few seconds. This build, once you get to level 20, does have a lot of survivability baked into it, but all of that survivability really comes down to whether or not you can hit your enemy or not. <laughs> That's really the most important part. I'm just trying to get him to use his essence. I know there's no way I killed a Haka here, 
Ooh, maybe there is a way I killed a hockey here. <laughs> uh, let's try to soften up some of this. Remember, with your Q, it resets your auto attack swing. So you can Q and then instantly Q again. Or auto attack and then instantly Q to auto attack again. Like that. So I'm trying to use my auto attack to soften the guys up and not just sit on that Q charge and walk around with it. Uh, I have 23 butts right now, though, so we need to make sure... I don't do something stupid and just die with him. I'm gonna try to eat. Oh, that sucks. Yep. Oh, I almost saw my fate. 23 last hits are what we're at right now. We need two more to finish the quest, and then we get that big, big, big spike of damage. I need 15 total region globes. We've only picked up five so far, so a little bit to be desired there. At level seven, we picked up Hand of Ragros. If Empower Sulfurus hits at least two enemy heroes, refund 10 mana, and its cooldown recharges 100% faster. I don't know how I feel about this one. This one has been the shakiest of this uh, I've, this is my third game playing this build, and I kind of think blistering attacks might synergize with me a little bit better. But I'm going to try. I mean, these guys are grouped up right now. I would have gotten the proc there, you know what I mean? It's just trying to find that proc has been difficult in a lot of these team fights. Uh, the enemy team has 42 butts ready to go. They need only eight more being turned in, so we're going to have to watch these turn-ins like a hawk. Seems like the Haka went down to the bottom lane. I can get my last hit right here. Whoa! Oh, got one of them. All right, quest is complete. There is a fight to our left. Taronda is stunned already. Murdered and chasing down those kills. Right. They did turn in. I think they did that down in bot. Auto attack Q. Ooh, close. So there, if I had used my E for better positioning, I think we would have been totally fine. I just gave my E to our tank to help him get in, though, and that life grip from both teams definitely saves a life. Now, here's our trait. I'll go ahead and use it just to say we did. Uh, and I'm going to take my sippy cup so my mana regens while I'm in this. Our trait allows me to take over a building. Friendly buildings you can take over whenever you want. If they're standing or defeated, it does not matter. Enemy buildings you can take over, but only after they have fallen. And this allows us to siege things from afar. It increases the radius of some of our ultimates. And it also, more importantly, protects the health bar of the building underneath while you are using Molten Core. So on Blackheart's Bay, for instance, you can eat a ton of artillery shots. Or, I mean, not a ton, but you can eat some artillery shots to save the health bar of your buildings in lane. Uh, let's move around to... I was baited in by the Chromie 100%. They were totally waiting for bush strats. Oh. I'm just gonna push. I'm just gonna push. I've been trying to make Sulfurous Smash work with this build, and I still believe in it. The problem is that Lava Wave is just good in every situation. So trying to m not pick Lava Wave just for the sake of picking, picking Sulfurous Smash, I don't know if that's the play. But I do think that we have the potential to do some big damage with it. So I'm once again going to try. Uh, w ability on to the lane gets it weak. We smash it and it's cleared. And then we lead. Triumphantly. W ability. Smash. Cleared. We farm super fast now. Uh, I want to turn in. We see three down bottom, I believe. So I'm gonna to try to sneak this. Molten core ready in 30 seconds. It does seem like there's a big fight underneath this. I'm gonna keep soaking. I'm gonna to try to get, get us to level 13. Our region globe quest has been completed and that feels pretty good. E into lane. Said W lets me one shot him, E does not. W has a longer cooldown though. Might be able to move in on the flank now. He's still moving too. Fuck. Popping my armor. I have one more heal. God damn it. That was so close. We do take down the enemy team's Malganus, but unfortunately, I baited my teammates 
right back in there to that tussle. I had so much faith in my ult landing. Murden does gather some of the butts, but is he going to be able to get out? That should slow him, right? Okay, Murden does does get away. So how Sephiris Smash works is it's a big circle, but then there's an inner circle that does increase damage. The outer circle only deals like 400. If you beam someone with the center, it's going to deal almost a thousand, 951 damage right in the center. We're going to move back towards the middle lane, clear this as fast as possible, and then try to soak to catch back up on XP. Now, while I'm double soaking, I don't want to I don't want to ignore every fight. Like I do think showing up to that fight and trying to help was important. But it was while I was still rotating around and getting XP. Like I don't want to just abandon top lane to move across the map to get that. But because the fight was close, I wanted to participate in it. Uh, let's see if we get dragged into oblivion. It looks like we will be put to sleep. Yeah, this is fun. Thank you. I love playing with viewers. That was a totally normal play that any team would have done at any time. <laughs> we'll be back up in 12 seconds. Unfortunately, the objective is moving towards the top lane right now. Multicore is ready if I do get up there and feel like we need to save this building. But unfortunately, I think it will fall before I get there. At level 13, we are going to increase the healing that we get from our Q ability. That might help out with our sustain. I think I just need to smash Catching Fire a little bit faster. Uh, the objective did not take down the building. As long as we kill it before that snipe, I think we're fine. Two members of the enemy team are moving down top lane now, though. I feel like I need to stay here for one more wave. Okay. Okay. That should be good enough. Let's see if we can go help out. Now, Gannis is blocking my entrance from this direction, so I have to go around. Big root there. Life Grip does pull him to safety, but he's going back in. He wants to fight some more. Oh, Nahaka just burrowing underneath that, popping my armor now. Need to Q to heal. Popping my E and meatballing. Queuing one more time. Ooh, I got the cooldown reset there. They were grouped up enough for that there. That's a lot of healing where you could spam it out like that. Wow. All right, Chromie up in the top lane trying to get away from the group. She does swap to one of her ghost clones, but it is not enough. Boss is open. I do think we should take it. I'm going to just clear this lane. Um... We also have a turn in after this as well. Every member of the enemy team is currently deceased. Auto attack you. My mana doesn't really seem to be that bad with this setup either. And I feel like I'm spamming out abilities quite a lot. Okay, now we're gonna get Giant Scorcher at level 16. This is going to allow us to deal 9% of our target's maximum health and damage to them over the course of a few seconds, every time we hit him with our Q ability. The enemy team has double frontline, so that should be very valuable versus them. Friendly team just picked up top boss as well as the objective, so we have a ton of pushing power right now. And of course, if we move in and take this building, I can then Molten Core and reinforce it even more. Uh, the Malganis tried to move through our team, but was taken down. I'm going to go ahead and increase my armor and try to grab those butts before they get removed from play. The boss still is pushing and the spider is nearby. So I am going to play aggressive. Become the building. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We can fucking do it. All right, now I'm going to stop being a building any moment now and we can continue on our normal actions. Now I have 42 butts. I gotta protect these butts. So I don't think I'm gonna move up and push. Instead, I'm going to try to be somewhere that the enemy team won't see me. Uh, it is gonna be 10 seconds before I can turn in. I would like to try to turn in. Yeah. Alganus is above us. Tahak is beneath us. I think I got it. Nice! 88 seconds until we can Molten Core again. Oh, look at that burst damage! Look at the Q! She popped! 
Whoa! And look at the dot, too. 152 a tick versus Malganus. I mean, I have ult, dude. We could just... We could send it. We could just do a dry ult and see if it stuns someone again. It happened once, so it's bound to happen again. I feel powerful. <laughs> Clear that. Gather the butts. I would very much like this wall out of my life. 45 on Molten Core, so I won't be able to reinforce this push quite as hard. And all this spamming has hurt my mana a little bit. Definitely noticeable this time. No Sippy Cup nearby, and they've already totally cleared that. 34 on Molten Core. Enemy has to rotate from here, so I'm going to try to get in the way. Did that work? Yeah, we killed the Haka. Good. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Gather these butts and just let that push. It does seem like there's a fight middle, and Chromie just shot off something towards me. I'm going to have to armor and ping for help here. Stun. Has to land. Son of a bitch, it did land. Oh, I should have just gone in and tried to clobber him. I knew there was no way I could escape that, and I was looking for any way out. Damn. Damn, damn. damn. I could have won that if I just went in and played off of that all. Dropped a few butts on the ground, but that's okay. Friendly team did manage to take down middle and bottom, I believe, in this push. So our siege is looking great. We're also one level ahead of the enemy team, but they just hit 19, so they're catching up pretty fast, too. Great stun from Taranda onto the Dingo. Root on the other side of the wall as well. Oh, Tychus almost taking him down. We then see Chromie on the top side of the screen. Murden jumps in, and Dahaka follows suit, but then runs away very quickly. We are respawning, and I think that I... I don't know, is the slow there good for us? It could allow Tychus to do some pretty dis disgusting damage if he has his minigun sw uh, spinning up. Submerge helps keep me safer, but not with the way that I've been playing. <laughs> uh, Molten Core has more health and reduced cooldown. I don't think... Nah, let's go for Submerge. So what this is going to allow me to do is jump under the earth. And while I'm down there, I'm going to heal for, I believe, like 1300 HP. Now, that's not a lot. Uh, you're really using it to avoid damage or to let your other heals slowly uh, slowly heal you up over time. Give them time to actually be effective. Although I think you are in a stasis. So you may not be able to heal in that mode. I might be talking nonsense. I am going to try to keep the pressure up on Anduin here. Dahaka emerging. Dodge the tongue. Did not dodge it. Thank you. You praying, bro? What are you praying about? Tell me. Tell me! <laughs> did, it, did it come true? Did you stop moving and take a kneel so you could t commune with the light? You shouldn't be talking to the light on my time, Anduin! I was just literally staring at him, waiting to see if that would happen. I got very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> if we are able to take this building, we could theoretically Molten Core, but... If we're, you need to keep in mind that you deal reduced siege damage in Molten Core, so you're not really using it as like an artillery barrage situation. You're using it to help your teammates hold an area. Speed boost. Hit the building instead of him. I wanted percent damage out. There we go. Percent damage out again. Just staring at my Q cooldown. All right. Clear the wave. Kind of looks like we're doing this. We did split their deaths. The Hawk is going to be down for 50 seconds. If we are staying in, I should. All right, start sieging. Battle, but I'll take it. Oh, I was almost in melee range. He fucking rooted me. I popped my armor, meatball. Oh, good dodge from Chromie. I'm just going to heal now. Use my stasis. I don't think Chromie's staring at me, so I think we're fine. Moving back in on building. Oh, the laser's in place. We definitely got it. GG, boys. I actually think that this is the hardest Ragnaros build to play. And I did not expect that going into our deep time today. We did 39% of the team structure damage. Look at us.
All right, talents we went for in today's game were Sulfurous Hungers. Focus on completing this early in the game to get that big damage boost. But if you are struggling with it, you can't get your stacks. Just know that as your damage increases, this is much easier to finish as the game goes on. Catching Fire, I should have been using this earlier in fights. It does help mitigate damage, and that added health regen does help sustain you in lane, especially when you're giving yourself little health potions with your Q all the time. Hand of Ragnaros popped off in one fight where I definitely would have died without it. Very impressed by this. There is a talent at this tier, though, that just gives you more damage on your auto attack every 10 seconds. I do think that would be a decent alternative. So if you're a smash, I picked that in this game just because the other two builds, uh, really every build for Ragnaros does great with Lava Wave, and I wanted to make sure we had some use case where I could show you how to use it. Remember the... Uh, the diameter of the AoE gets bigger if you're in your Molten Core form on a building. Then Cauterize Wounds for more healing. Giant Scorcher to really melt away even the highest health targets. And then I went for a Submerge just to try to protect my health. It does say 600 health there, so I guess it does scale throughout the course of the game. Can't trust the tooltip here. That's going to do it for our first look at Ragnaros in our deep dive. There will be more on the way. Check out the playlist down in the video description to see our other deep dives as well.